So a couple variables here. So we don't want to shoot the parts cannon just yet because on this car you know it's going to be expensive. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today in the shop we have a European 2014 BMW X3, the uh, X Drive 28i. It has the twin power turbo, two liter engine, four cylinder. And customer complaint is over the last said so six weeks or so, intermittently it just drastically loses power. Check engine light comes on, and the message says drive moderately, drivetrain malfunction. Uh oh. <laughs> So this thing has uh, 71,000 miles on it, so for BMW, pretty typical to start breaking down at that mileage, I guess. Here we go, drivetrain malfunction, drive moderately, maximum drivetrain output not available, consult service center. I took it for a spin, yeah, it is, It you know, it, it drives like it doesn't have a turbo, <laughs> so pretty weak sauce. In the engine we have three codes. There's six digit codes. Here they are. Electric wastegate learning limit stop malfunction. Electric wastegate learning limit stop stop position wastegate closed outside tolerance. And then charging pressure control switch off as consequence. So basically this thing doesn't know where the wastegate position is for the turbo. It'll I think just leave it open and you have no turbo, no boost. <laughs> Not fun. So let's look up some service info on these codes and uh, diagnose the problem. So here we are on all data and for BMW sometimes the information is quite lacking. We don't have trouble code descriptions and if you click on here all you get is service bulletins not helpful we can look at some service bulletins and I did not see anything here relating to this uh, wastegate problem let's read up on the system here's an electric wastegate valve so it controls the charging pressure for the twin scroll turbocharger and it's re regulated by the engine control module so it has an electric control motor and a linear Hall effect sensor collects the position of the electric motor the Hall effect sensors reports position to the engine control module so here it is that's the actuator with the sensor built in has a rod and the wastegate valve is right there so when the wastegate valve is open the exhaust gas just goes straight out the exhaust pipe without spooling up the turbo. When the valve is closed, then we have turbo action and we get boost. So the wastegate, you know, concept has been around for a while, but they're using an electric actuator here with a sensor, and it's fussing about that position not being appropriate when the valve is closed. So in this case uh, we don't really know what the known good values are. So five wires plus and minus in the motor, five volt ground and signal. Here are the pin assignments and the expected values here. Signal voltage Again, I don't think that's right because it should vary from like half a volt to 4.5. Uh, how do we test this thing? How do we go about diagnosing it? Well, let's uh, first locate the component. Luckily, it's uh, pretty easy to access. It's right there. And there's the rod that goes to our wastegate. So we have five pins. And on the scanner, I already checked, we do not have bidirectional controls, and we don't even have a data pit for the position of the wastegate. The only thing we can do is, if we replace the actuator, we can relearn the position. So, uh, 
basically what I want to do is hook up a scope to this thing so we can see the signal voltage of that position sensor and also uh, clear the codes and test drive it and see if it'll kick in see if it can actually do its own whatever position check and see what the ranges are from fully closed to fully open make sure the sensor works make sure the actuator works um, it might be a problem a mechanical problem in the wastegate what if that valve is carboned up and when it's trying to close it can't close all the way and then the uh, computers fussing about the position so a couple variables here so we don't want to shoot the parts cannon just yet because on this car you know it's going to be expensive uh, let's get out the scope and start it up and see what the actuator does on its own and maybe we can manually energize that motor and see if the if the rod moves we can take it off uh, make sure the rod goes uh, freely inspect the wastegate valve itself uh, maybe use a bore scope. A lot of options here, but uh, let's hook up the scope see what it does. Alright, so here are the pinouts. There's one, two, three, four, five pins. I have them written down right here. And the scope we're going to hook up. Channel number. So the motor the green and the gray, we're going to do channel 1 and 2. Then uh, the 5 volt reference and then the position signal. So we can do um, channel 3 is signal, channel 4 is the 5 volt reference, and then black ground we can check with a test light. Alright, there's our 5 pin connector. Test light from battery positive, we touch something metal, nice bright light. Middle pin, nice bright light. So the ground for the sensor, we won't monitor during our test, but the other four wires, I, yes, I poked a small hole in them because this, when the car is driving, vibrating, these back probes, they're not the most reliable thing to use. So, and this connector is high up, I'm not worried about moisture intrusion, but we will put a little dielectric grease over those holes to seal them up so don't worry about it well, let's hook up the four channels alright we got four channels hooked up scopes in the car let's uh, see if we can activate this turbo waste gate okay so I just turned the key on we had some change in position let's start it up it's definitely pulse width modulating itself Go back. So right now, the wastegate seems to be operational. It's going up and down, and we don't have a. Uh, You know, we have a check engine light, but not the drivetrain malfunction. Let's shut it off. Okay, so let's stop it there and save that capture. Okay, let's take a quick look at the data. First, the 5 volt reference, it comes up from 0 to 5.0 volts. That's good, not worried about that. Let's look at that position of the wastegate. So the range here on the green channel, when it's active, here's the you know positive to negative or um, in and out or closed and open. The full range there is from 0 0.4 to 4.2 volts. So that's basically when it does the self check and that's when it usually sets the code now we do see we don't see any dropouts we don't see any problem with the electric motor uh, so just from this capture I'm suspecting a mechanical problem with uh, the wastegate you know the tolerances here might be really really close so if there's a little carbon on that wastegate and it's not closing as far as it did before 
Well, that could upset the uh, the algorithm here. But mechanically, I don't see anything wrong with it just yet. I wish we had some known good values of when it's uh, open or closed. So, so now that we're running right here, and I revved it a couple times, so I assume when the signal is low, our wastegate is... Well, would it be open or closed? I assume open. We don't want the turbo spooling when you know you're at idle. So again, we're down here about 1.1 volts, and then when I revved it up, it shot up to about 4.4.5 volts, right about there. Okay. I don't see anything wrong with that. We can do a couple of uh, key cycles to see if it if it'll uh, clear the codes or not. So let's see. Key on. Ah, drivetrain malfunction. Bingo! It set the code. And we didn't see the full range of motion on that wastegate actuator. That's the problem. That's when it sets it. So if we see the full range, then we're good. If we see this, it's not happy. <laughs> um, this is basically tell, telling us that the actuator itself couldn't move it, couldn't move that rod, and we didn't have a good test of the actual range of of motions. Let me save this capture as well. Let me just clear the trouble codes while it's happy. Okay, no more check engine light. We're good. Read fault code, no fault code. It's happy. Let's take it for a spin and see, uh, you know, when, when it's under boost, what the signal does and kind of go from there. So now when the car is hot, it consistently fails the self test. You can just do it with key on. See, it just goes, eh, eh. it doesn't go full range. And each time it gives you the uh, drivetrain malfunction. So that's our problem. Now, the question is is it a mechanical fault? Is the wastegate like seizing up? Or. Is the actuator for some reason not able to uh, do that whole range of motion? So, what I want to do is manually put power and ground on the two motor wires back and forth and see if it moves all the way in and out. And, um, you know, just see if there's freedom of movement of that uh, wastegate. Because when it's cold, it you know it was fine but when it's hot now it fails every time all right here we go manual bypass test you got positive and negative connected so the yellow is the blue channel and the black once you connect this to ground the motor should move one way let's focus in on that waste gate I'm going to touch a ground Okay, so it went all the way that way. Now, if we go the other way, all right. Now I want to measure the current going to that motor just using an amp clamp. I think the spec said six amps or so, so let's uh, put it around. So we matter this black cable. About five amps. And the other way. 
uh, six amps. So I got the actuator unbolted and just moving the actuator rod there's no binding and that closing uh, limit is very solid it's not like getting stuck there so I don't see any mechanical problems here what we can try to do is with the scanner try to do a relearn of this wastegate actuator position you know with time maybe that tolerance got a little bit off we'll see what happens because right now I'm not seeing any obvious problems with the actuator or the position sensor or the mechanical linkage okay another theory that I have is when this thing is fully retracted I think that's the closed position this rod is a little loose now over time this linkage might have developed a little bit of play and when the motor you know, retracts all the way that limit 4.7 volts might be too high maybe it's looking for 4.5 so either we can relearn the positions of this motor or we can actually adjust this uh, linkage right here where there's two two nuts on the actual on the shaft of the actuator motor and when it's all the way in we don't want the shaft to go in quite as far so we can turn this in I don't know a few turns and see if that makes it happier so we can do either relearn or reposition the the rod a little bit and relearn it again see if that helps so we don't we don't want it to go past like 4.5 volts right now it's going to 4.7 alright so on the launch in the main menu here in special function in drive adjusting the wastegate linkage this is pretty cool please wait so let's just try it F1 this service function is used the basic setting of the wastegate linkage of the electrical wastegate valve controller. Basic settings required after replacing the electrical wastegate valve controller. Adjustment travel to wastegate linkage will be measured when carrying out the basic adjustment. Adjustment travel might need to be adjusted mechanically according to the repair instructions provided on the side. Okay, so F1. Valuing fault memory. Terminal change must be carried out before the wastegate valve system test. To perform the terminal change, next, continue. Following actions carried out automatically. Terminal 15 switched off. Please wait. Okay. Definitely switched off. And it's switched on. Following test step is a system. Test is performed wastegate valve. The system test is carried out automatically and only takes a few seconds. Press next to start system test. Okay. Okay, so it moved. You can see on the scope. Wastegate valve system test complete. Continue. Wastegate status of wastegate valve system test. Value measured for closed limit position of wastegate valve lies outside the permissible range. Measured value minus 2.99 millimeters, set point value 0, 0.00. Okay, remember those numbers, 3 millimeters and 0. Continue. A fault on the wastegate valve was detected which cannot be eliminated by adjusting the wastegate linkage. Carry out test module relating to the electrical wastegate valve controller. The corresponding test module is entered automatically in the test plan. So it was out of range and uh, we still have our same fault right there so it said three millimeters so let's see how to adjust this waste linkage so in service info they're moving and installing replacing electrical actuator the procedure is make sure adjusting two is not adjusted blah 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 Retain clip on the wastegate linkage may not be released. Detach wastegate linkage. So you replace it. Tighten it up. 
installation note. Use two wrenches so we can shorten or increase the adjustment travel. To ensure reliable setting of the adjustment travel, both adjusting nuts must be marked with a colored mark. One full turn of the adjusting nut corresponds to an adjustment of 0.75 millimeters. Example 1. Actual value measured by the diagnostic function is plus 75 millimeters. Required correction is one turn, positive one turn. Adjust the linkage setting correction by turning the nut one through one turns in the plus direction before resetting the nut to encountering with six newton meters. So we had minus three, right? So we need to go in the minus direction three millimeters, which is almost four turns. Actually, exactly four turns. Very cool. And also, when you start this car up, you hear a rattling sound. So, and that's coming from the linkage because the motor's all the way out and it's still loose so we just need to tighten up that linkage adjustment I think that might fix this car so four turns remember that let's try it alright so I got the lock nut loosened up yellow mark right on this part so we're gonna turn this one two three Four turns in, tighten up the lock nut here, and do the adjustment again. All right, here we go. Key on, key off, key on. <laughs> I think we got it. Well, let's go through the uh, adjustment procedure here. To perform the next terminal change, click next. This key off. Key on. Continue. And it's definitely uh, going up and down. Continue with continue. Carried out successfully. No faults have been identified. Service function finished. Well, I think I think that's it. <laughs> Key off. Look at the green trace. Key on. Beautiful. So let's uh, go right into our engine computer. Okay, read the fault code. No, and clear fault code. No fault codes present, awesome. So we should take this thing for a test drive. And I think it should be in good shape. It's working beautifully. So if we back up, now our high point is at 4.0 volts, and our low is at 340 millivolts. So it's 
It's happy now. That's amazing. Let's save this. Take it for a spin. And if this works, this would be the most epic, no parts required fix, on a, especially on a BMW. All right, so next morning, cold start. Let's take this thing for a test drive. So we can see our wastegate pass the, uh, the self-test. And I just wanna see what it does when it's driving and make sure no codes are set uh, during the test drive. So just standing here in park, if we rev it up, see the wastegate did its thing and now it's at the high position so I guess it's ready to boost I don't know what the strategy is but we'll see when we're driving all right a little zero to 60 action here Woo not too bad for a two-liter turbo and as you can see by the scope the waste gate is closed most of the time, so it's ready to make boost, and it only opens up on a D cell, as you know, as expected. And it also opens up on the on a cold start for faster uh, cat warm up, I guess. Yep, it's just always uh, always in the closed position there, about four volts. All right, so this BMW runs like new. Uh, I'm amazed, no parts required. Just some research and a simple adjustment on the wastegate actuator linkage. That's it. Actuator's fine, wastegate itself is fine. Just over time, that linkage got maybe a little loose. So four turns on the nut, and boom, back in business. A little bonus footage. It has a whole bunch of annoying maintenance items here. Brake fluid, vehicle check, engine oil. And for these, you do need a, um, a scanner to reset these. Unless someone knows a, a fancy way to do it with the buttons on the dash. So, for so special function, X-Series, it's the F25 CBS reset. And let's try software reset vehicle check and there says vehicle check <clears throat> do you want to do the function you selected yes if the vehicle check is linked to the engine oil if the vehicle check and engine oil change were carried out at the same time please first carry out CBS ah so that will basically not clear until you do an oil change no Let's do the brake fluid. Okay, here we go. Brake fluid is okay. End of test module. Otherwise, this thing needs an oil change. And the customer, <laughs> I don't know why, said he's going to go to Valvoline and because he has a coupon for a discount. So, I would say driving a BMW like this, uh, it's very cheap insurance to get... Uh, a good proper oil change with you know mobile one synthetic euro oil the OEM filter the whole bit I'm pretty sure Valvoline you know even though it's cheaper they're not gonna uh, go all the way especially for European cars these things are picky and to make them last long you have to do religious oil changes I'd say every 5,000 miles GDI engine turbo don't want to mess with it so it's change your oil. But if that's what the customer wants, then we'll ship it. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.